Hello everyone, welcome to my channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Brennan gives Carly an alarming piece of advice, and Alexis learns of Gregory's passing. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. At General Hospital, Carly walks into Brennan's room. He smiles and says, another visit. She says she had to come as she heard he stabbed himself just to see her. She asks to see the scar, but he says it's bandaged, but it's pretty epic. She asks what really happened. He says a thug jumped him in the showers. Carly isn't buying this as he's a spy, and he'd never let himself be vulnerable. He jokes maybe he just wanted to see her. She doubts that and asks what's really going on. Jack tells her it's complicated, and she won't understand. Carly doesn't like being made to feel stupid, and he is sorry for that, as he does not believe she is stupid. He says he's a spy, these are spy games, and everyone has a motive and plays fast and loose with the truth. He says nothing is as it appears. She asks if he's saying he's not guilty. Brennan says he hasn't been tried for what he's been accused of as they fear what will come out in court. She knows he's not innocent, and Brennan says neither is who he's playing against, including Anna. He admits some of the things Anna has accused him of he's done, but no one in their world is innocent. He also says she is no spy. Otherwise, she wouldn't have visited him in Pentonville. However, she has no idea what she gave him that day. Carly asks what she could have told him that he didn't already know. Brennan gives her a lesson in espionage and says a good spy never tells. Carly doesn't care what he's up to. All she cares about is her friend Jason finding peace. She asks him to keep Jason out of whatever he's up to. He says he will guarantee her that he won't harm her friend and doubts. He'll ever see him as he will be sent back to prison soon. She says perhaps she'll visit him again before that, but he tells her not to. Brennan says, you should stay far away from me. He says people will tell her that he's a bad man and should stay away from him. She says she doesn't listen to people and makes up her own mind. He calls her beautiful and smart. Carly exits his room. At Chase and Brooklyn's place, he looks at Gregory's gift and feels he should be doing something, but all he wants to do is sit here. She says that's what he should do then, and she'll unpack their suitcases. There is a knock at the door, and Chase doesn't think he can handle any more sympathy. She says she'll get rid of them, but it turns out to be Tracy. Tracy tells Chase she's sorry about his father and that he was a wonderful man. She also brought them something, some fancy Italian wine. She knows they should be on their honeymoon, so she thought she'd bring a taste of Italy to them. Chase and Brooklyn thank her. Brooklyn excuses herself to open the wine. Chase tells Tracy he is thankful to her for being a friend to his dad when he needed one. Tracy says that's kind, but she preferred to skip the platitudes. He says it's not a platitude, it's the truth. She's sorry for offending him, and he's sorry as he's not good at this grief stuff. Tracy admits if it were up to her, she and Gregory wouldn't have been friends. She has acquaintances but few friends. However, Caring about Gregory snuck up on her. Chase says his dad did that to people. Tracy calls him warm, engaging, and never self-pitying. She says he faced the end of his life with dignity and courage, and he should be proud of him. Chase is proud of his father, which is why it's killing him that this is all his fault. He says he asked his dad to officiate at the wedding, and it was too much, and that is why. Tracy tells him not to do this to himself. She says his father was over the moon at his wedding, and officiating their wedding is what kept Gregory going these past few weeks. Chase didn't think about it that way. Tracy says he shouldn't punish himself for his father's death. It was sad and unfair, but that's how life is. She says it wasn't anyone's fault. She admits she never heard his father brag, except when it came to his sons. She laughs he never stopped talking about Chase, and it was his one annoying quality. Chase laughs and notes it's the first time he's laughed since he got the news. Brooklyn returns with the wine, and Tracy sees herself out. Chase and Brooklyn enjoy the wine. Chase can't believe how fast everything can change. He knows he is in pain, 
but it must be worse for Finn as dad was the last parent he had. He is sitting here drinking, so how can he blame Finn for doing the same? Brooklyn says their situations aren't the same, and Finn is in recovery. Chase tells her what he and Finn talked about when she was out with Violet. He says Finn was the one who found dad, and he doesn't want to add to his problems. He thinks he can get Finn through this without him needing another drink. She promises to support him through this. Chase knows AS is fatal, but part of him thought his dad might be able to beat it, and knows that is insane. He wishes he could talk to him one last time. Chase tells her that her grandmother told him how happy he was to see them married, and he feels his dad knew it would be okay to leave as he would have her by his side. She says, always. Sam visits Spinelli at his workspace. He's been thinking about what they discussed, and he has to emphasize that tangling with the FBI is highly ill-advised. Sam asks if he's saying he doesn't want to help her. He feels going behind Jason's back is wrong and doesn't understand what could have forced him to be an FBI informant. Sam doesn't know, which is what they need to find out. Sam says she can't do this alone. She can't hack into the FBI on her own, which is why she needs him. Spinelli says that whatever the FBI has against Jason, they are likely protecting it with strict protocols. Sam isn't asking him to do this for her or Jason, but for Danny. She doesn't know what he'll do if he loses Jason again. He asks if she is really willing to risk her freedom, and she is for Danny. Maxie arrives and is surprised to see Sam. Sam asks Spinelli to think about what she said and leaves. Maxie wonders what that was about. Spinelli confesses all and admits that he's having second thoughts, and her entrance was well-timed and gives him time to think it over. Maxie says what the FBI is doing is insane, and she understands Sam's motives, but isn't this a felony? He says it is, so Maxie says this could put him at risk and injured his family. He says that's why he will turn Sam down if she wants him to. Maxie asks if she wasn't in the equation, would he help Sam? Spinelli says he would. She tells him to do it but to be careful, and if there is a sign the FBI is onto him, then he needs to abandon ship. He promises. Maxie says she and the kids need him, and they all miss him living with them, so she invites him over to dinner. Anna visits Jason at his place to discuss what happened between Sonny and Dex at the wedding. She says Dex told her what happened, and he's not pressing charge. She agrees with that move as Sonny would only serve two years, and it's better to wait for a charge that carries a longer sentence. He asks why she's here then. Anna explains she heard Dex's version of the events and wants to hear his. He explains he had a bad feeling at the wedding, saw Sonny follow Dex, and followed them both. Anna asks what the hell is going on with Sonny. Jason says, off the record, he lost it and he threatened to kill him and Dex. Anna doesn't understand how Sonny allowed this to happen in a public place where anyone could have seen it. Anna asks if he thinks Sonny would try and have him and Dex killed. Jason says there was a time he never thought Sonny would target him, and if something happens to him or Dex, he'll be the first suspect, and he knows it. He says the Sonny he knew was calm, and there were lines he didn't cross. He hopes that is still the case. Anna knows he can't be certain, though. Jason tells her that after Christina saw what happened, Sonny ran after her, and that's when he called Carly. Anna says, Carly to the rescue again. He asks who else she saved. Anna tells him about Brennan's probable self-inflicted injury in order to communicate with whoever is running Pikeman. Jason asks what this has to do with Carly. She says Brennan joked he had stabbed himself to see Carly again. Jason asks if that's possible. Anne admits Brennan seems to be taken with her, but he's up to something and is using Carly as his cover. In Albany, Fergus finds Alexis dining by herself. He sits down at her table, and she thinks he's following her. She tells him to go away. He asks how the food is. She asks if she needs to report him to his own hearing for harassment. Fergus says he'll leave her, but asks why she is appealing her disbarment now after all these years. Alexis says there is no secret. It just took her a long time to realize what a huge miscarriage of justice her disbarment was. Fergus doesn't think so, and he thinks she played the long game, hoping everyone forgot what she did.